And hey, how lucky is that? And hey, this pretty baby's made of platinum silver too. Another... Wait, another pendant on top of the one we found on Mr. Deacon. Is it possible that these two... Hold it right there, wolf boy. <laughs> Motto meant Agent Lang, but whatever. Both names away. Hands off, Mr. Prosecutor. You sure know how to cross the line, don't you? A pendant, huh? This is a very decisive piece of evidence. How can you tell? Look here and read off what, what you see. So, Lauren. Hey, it's a name that's engraved on this. Hmm? Oh! Wait, it's... Lauren Pops. But it says Lauren D. Doesn't it? Yeah, Lauren D. I... I... Aha! We have you now, Miss Kidnapper. No, you don't understand. I... I... Holly, I can't believe you were one of my kidnappers. Lance. You're kidding. Miss Potts was one of the kidnappers? Yes. Oh. It... it was me. I held Lance hostage. So Miss Pops is one of the kidnappers. But even knowing that, I can't call this case solved. Or over. Hey guys, case closed. Get the car ready and I'm... And I mean the special one for this young lady. Again, Mr. Prosecutor? What is it this time? Are you proposing that Miss Pops is also the, cr the culprit in the murder case? What happened? I thought Officer Meekins was your suspect. Hmm, we found it. Found what? That officer's gun. He literally dropped it in the middle of a, a thick patch of grass. Your country's police are a sham. Just look at how careless they are. Who are you calling a sham? The officer's gun didn't show signs of having been fired. So it can't be the murder weapon. So Officer Meekins has been cleared of all charges, I see. And that's when a brand new suspect comes walking onto the scene. The murder only happened because the kidnappers started fighting amongst themselves. As I recall, it was you who said that, right, Mr. Prosecutor? Miss Pops, did you... did you really kill Mr. Deacon? I... yes, I killed him. I can't believe it. Thanks for the confession. Agent Lang, it's much too early to declare this case closed. Look at you, so sure of yourself. We got the culprit's own confession and some very incriminating evidence. What more could you ask for? Miss Lauren Parks? Yes? I want to hear it from you. Tell me your side of all that has happened today, from the kidnapping to the murder. But why? I, I'm the kidnapper and the killer. Isn't that enough? Oh, the fuck? Are they scissors? Oh no, she's threatening to cut her hair. It's fine if you're the one behind everything, but only if that is the truth. Now then, will you tell us the truth? Or is there some reason why you can't? I've had a change of heart. I think I'd enjoy seeing you sulk away as, a, as the losing mutt. Alright, you heard me. Let's hear about all the evil deeds you committed today. Okay. Miss Pop's confession. The one who came up with the kidnapping plan was the butler, Mr. Deacon. We knew that we could get rich by holding Lance hostage. Mr. Romano would pay anything to get his son back after all. Everything was going according to plan, but as soon as we got the money... Mr. Deacon turned on me and tried to kill me. There, you satisfied? She just confessed to her crimes a second time. At least you have the guts to admit what you've done. I can at least respect that much. Miss Pops. Is what you said really the truth? Yes, it is. If that is the truth, it certainly isn't the whole truth. But there is something that seems a bit too improbable in her confession. Yep. Me... Tinkstat 2. So, Miss Pop's confession. It's the last statement, but I'll press everything. Mr. Deacon would not try and kill her. Mm -mm. There is no chance. So, how well did you know the victim? 
I've spoken with him only a few times at Lance's house. A few times? That's it. Uh, yes. They only met a few times. I don't see how they could have trusted each other. But if you hardly ever talked, then how could he trust you not to steal his plan? That's completely irrelevant. He was planning to betray Heaven from the very beginning. Which is why he chose someone he wasn't especially close to. Isn't that right, Sheena? Yes, however, Mr. Deacon made a very poor choice. In the end, he was killed by the one he intended to betray himself. Huh. But I bet you he didn't see that one coming. Hmm. You knew? How did you know something like that? Uh, oh no, what should I do? Okay, what's wrong with her now? Come on, isn't it obvious? You're making your scary face again, that's why. Why don't you try asking her in a nicer, more gentle way? Hmm. No, stop it, Lauren. You're always like this. You always fall for the stern-looking one. That's why you'll always be unhappy. Or maybe that's it. She's been bewitched by your icy glare. Mind your own business, Kay. Now then. Miss Pops, let's continue with your testimony. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> I like how that didn't actually give any information. Would pay anything to get his son back. Why did you believe that? Anyone who knows Mr. Romano would think the same. I bet Lance is that old man's greatest treasure. I suppose he would be... to a doting father like Mr. Romano. I always figured that was it too. And I was always envious of Lance for it. Oh, because your dad's... I got this pendant from my father. Aha! Uh -huh. And I believe that as long as I have this, I'll find my father again someday. He'll welcome me into his arms, riding on the back of Pegasus. A pendant, you must truly believe it to be the wings of Pegasus. Does she not know? She did say she wouldn't even recognize him. Oh no! I never even thought about that. Crap. Oh dear. Man, that's not good. Would you mind telling us a little about the plan itself? Well, first we captured Lentz. Oh, how did you do that? Uh, that, well, Mr. Deacon did that on his own, so I don't, I don't quite know. Bah, and here I thought you knew how to steal people away. I should have to think what she would do with such knowledge. Sorry, I really don't know, but somehow Mr. Deacon was able to contain him. All we had to do after that was wait for the ransom to be paid, but... Mr. Deacon turned on me and tried to kill me. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Wait. Oh wait, no, I don't need to present anything. Crap, no. Press first. So, why do you think he did? I have no idea, but maybe he had planned on doing so from the very beginning. Miss Pops. Wait, Mr. Deacon planned to kill Miss Pops from the very beginning. Was that ever really likely to happen? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Hell yeah. I'm sorry, but I don't think what you just claimed is all that likely. Hmm? I don't think Mr. Deacon would have ever been capable of killing you. But why? We were total strangers. Miss Pops, you really are clueless, aren't you? What do you mean? You never knew what your role in the kidnapping was, nor do you know who you really are. But I do, and I can show you with this piece of evidence. This proves that Mr. Deacon wouldn't have been able to bring himself to kill Miss Pops. Right, so there. Take your pendant! Why are you showing this to me? So what about the pendant? This pair of wings, along with this piece of evidence, shows who you really are. These two pendants resemble each other, wouldn't you agree? Hey, you're right. They're the same colour, and they're even made of the same material. I believe that these two pendants are actually one. Huh? Shall we give it a try? Wow, it's... it's totally Pegasus. But why? Why does my pendant match up with Mr. Deacon's? You're a smart lady. I'm sure you can imagine why that might be. W no, that can't be. So the two make a set, huh? Just another trinket. It's not as though this changes anything. 
You like imagination, Agent Lang. Very well. I'll show you with this evidence. This is the piece of evidence that gives meaning to the Pegasus Pendant. Oliver Deacon was just an alias for this man. His real name was Colin Deveray. The name that is etched on the horse pendant. What an alias. I suppose he had to hide the fact that he was a felon, somehow, in order to live. And it makes sense, given what is written on Mr. Deveray's dossier. But what I really wanted to point out was this. The specific section is what reveals the true meaning behind those pendants. What, the daughter? Crap. I'll just present- I can't move it up, so, yeah. Try that. Miss Debray had one daughter, and her name is Lauren Parks. That's a lie. That person was not my father. He couldn't come out and tell you he was your father because he was in hiding. However, I believe he was trying to secretly watch over you. Do you still believe that a man like that could kill the daughter he was separated from? Or even that such a man would allow his daughter to get involved in a kidnapping plot? He's just laughing away. <laughs> What's so funny, Agent Lang? You're good at making things up in your head and deciding it's the truth, aren't you? What are you trying to say? You're thinking that your thinking is much too innocent. After all, I've thought of another possi possibility. Is that so? Well, let's hear it. Of course. Hmm. So, another possibility. I'll grant you that the two of them are father and daughter. But isn't it possible that they both knew that fact? There's no coincidence that the reunited pair became involved in the House of Amano. And the two of them made good use of their meetings to plan this little kidnapping. Wouldn't you say my scenario is perfectly probable as well? Hmm. So this is his version of how things might have been. You don't have any proof that either one of them or either one didn't know of their true relationship, right? You mean they knowingly committed the kidnapping as father and daughter? That's right. As one really rotten family. Is that really what happened? I better take a long, hard look at the evidence. Hmm. Okay. So, another possibility. <laughs> Precisely, and what father would ever willingly kill his own daughter. I've seen a lot of things in my travels. And I can tell you that being related by blood is sometimes proof of nothing. But isn't it possible that they both knew the fact? No. You think they knew? Yeah, I... Wait. Yeah, I don't think only the victim knew. I think the girl realised it as well. They both knew who the other person was, but they had, had to pretend that they didn't. Because he was on the lam? You got it. The victim couldn't exactly go around flaunting who he was. Furthermore... There was no coincidence that the reunite pair, blah blah blah... One as a butler, and one as the friend of the son. You mean... They probably thought that that was their best shot. Is that what you honestly believe? Of course. The two of them made good use of their meetings to plan this little kidnapping. <laughs> what could I do? Oh, there we go. Yeah, a blue proto badge. But there were three of them. Can I not just present the cups? Look, there's three! And also, false fall was stolen. This kidnapping wasn't planned by just two people alone. What kind of proof do you have of that? Quite simply, there were three kidnappers. Three? Four costumes were stolen from the Wild Wild West area's back room. We found one of them in the kidnapper's hideout. But as for the other three, 
we can assume that we're being worn by three different people. We also found a set of three cups and three folding chairs that were used in the hideout. It's all clearly, it all clearly points to a three-man group. And I believe this third person is the real mastermind behind the kidnapping. H who? Who is this mastermind? I present to you the brains behind the kidnapping. God, he's... How is he a ladies' man? Whatever. Lance Amano? Yes, his abduction was in fact schemed up by Lance himself. Recall what he said when he appeared before us. Did you see the faces of your kidnappers? No, I didn't. I didn't see their faces, but two. One was a woman. Yeah, how would he know? However, there were three kidnappers, which is in direct contradiction to what you said. But I know I only saw two people. This guy was being held hostage, it's possible he couldn't see all three of them. Ah uh, yes, about when you were being held, I had my doubts about what happened then. Lance, would you mind telling us what happened while you were being held captive? I really don't remember much anymore, honest. But if I don't tell you at least something, you won't believe me at all, will you? Hmm. Okay, so his testimony. I was kidnapped yesterday morning. They had me shut in that room, blindfolded the entire time. But the kidnappers suddenly disappeared around the time I heard rain falling outside. My hands were cuffed, but it was a stroke of luck that they left me alone. I made my escape and ran away from that room as fast as I could. Hmm. Through the underground passageway, I assume? You okay? Sorry, I really didn't want to recall that horrible ordeal, but... But now you believe me, right? No, not quite yet. How can you not? Why do you look at me with... icy daggers in your eyes? Because he's a prosecutor, and because they're all like that. I'll have you know, Agent Lang, a prosecutor's eyes are for discerning the truth. And they should be interpreted to be cruel at times, then so be it. And should they be interpreted to be cruel at times, then so be it. There's a sticking point in Lance's testimony. Let's see what he offers up when I push a little. Hmm. Can you tell us about when you were abducted in a little more detail? It was a strange morning. I felt like I was right in the middle of a great calm. Then where were, were you when you experienced this ca this calm? A family garden, of course. Where else could it have been? Well, excuse me for asking. This child is more princess than prince. I was out taking a walk to shake off the morning blah. And out of the blue, someone from behind clamps a hand over my mouth. You didn't see your attacker? They must have used some drug to knock me out. Because before I knew it, I was off in La La Land again. When I woke up, I was already in the kidnapper's hideout already, all tied up. By that room you mean the room in the kidnapper's hideout, correct? Yes, but I was blindfolded the whole time so I didn't know th that until I made my escape. Then you were in the same room as your kidnappers. They spoke in hushed tones, but I could catch bits of their conversation. It was definitely two people, but, and one of them was definitely a woman. I was so scared. I could tell they were nearby, so I didn't dare make a move. Right. Ba -ba -ba. The kidnappers disappeared. The room fell into a sudden silence. I had been left behind like an unwanted mutt. What do you mean by <laughs> unwanted mutt? What a pointless question. It's not like he's going to tell you anything new, you know. It's a poetic simile. You should learn how to use them, too. You may look refined on the outside. But it's no good if you're not refined on the inside as well. Mm-hmm. So, then those cuffs on your wrist... Or wrists. I suppose you are still cuffed in that case. I am well aware of how I am chained to reality. I couldn't find the key, so I'm afraid that I'm stuck like this. Even though I escaped from that jail cell, I will forever be a prisoner. Hold 
how did you manage to escape? I wanted to just get out of there, but the door leading outside was locked. Which is why I had to use the underground passageway to make my escape. I remember our escape to be equally as hard. This is an invaluable piece of testimony. I mustn't let it go unexamined. I think... yeah, no. I had to use the underground passageway. Hmm... Um... Actually, it's more the fact the door wasn't locked. It was propped shut, essentially. Or jammed shut. But that was on the inside, so... That's just confusing. Hmm. You say that the door leading out was locked, but was it really? Hey, the hook... the... The cuffs just flew off his hands. We're talking about that room behind the saloon front, right? Look, I heard that it took quite a few men to get that thing open, right, Gina? Yes, that's correct. Then take a look at this. What is that? A sword? It's not an especially reliable one if it's broken like that. Allow me to start from my uh, from the end. My conclusion is that the, do that the doll was never locked. There we go. It was simply held shut by the sword, which was used to jam the handle. And even though your hands were cuffed together, you could still use them. If that's the case, then why did you not just simply remove the sword and escape? Why didn't I? I was disoriented. Yeah, that's it. I didn't notice it. As if I should accept such a bald-faced lie. You locked yourself in, the, in that room because you had to make sh yourself look like the victim. But you did not, in fact, possess the key to the door. That is why you use the prop sword to improvise and create a key a uh, prison of your very own. You've been making this guy out to be one of the kidnappers for some time now. I wonder if you've forgotten something very important along the way. What would that be? A motive, what else? Do you honestly think that an up upright pure boy like him would hatch hatch up a completely pointless scheme such as kidnapping himself? Hmm. <laughs> Ba -da -da. This proves that Lance did indeed have a motive to commit this crime. Indeed it do! Tender lender! Take to put it simply, Lance has a very urgent need for money. This is hardly your typical love letter. It is, in fact, a, collect a collections bill. It appears our upstanding boy has accumulated quite a debt. Isn't that right, Lance? Oof. Looks like it's hard being the son of a rich man, too. Must be rough when you have to resort to stealing from your own old men, huh? All right, I give up. I abducted myself. Lance! It's over, Lolly. In this life, we really are bound to our fates, after all. All I wanted was to go to... Uh, to go with you to a new town, somewhere where no one could, would know us. I wanted us to be well off with that one million dollars, but now that dream is over. Ah, oh, Lance. Then you were giving yourself up? Yes. I had planned to run away from this world with my lolly. Oliver even helped us with the plan, but then he had to go sta and stab us in the back. He turned on you? Maybe he didn't want to split the ransom money, that's my guess. It happened almost right after you made the drop-off. Oh. When we were alone, he, s he attacked me all of a sudden. After a brief struggle, I was able to contain him and keep him under control. We left him inside that room as Lolly and I made our escape. We wore different costumes, and split up. Lolly left first in the blue badger costume. That would mean the person Officer Meekin saw was Miss Pops. But right then, the old man just had to wake up. I was careless and he tackled me pretty hard from behind. Then Oliver put, put on a bad badger costume. Took the suitcase with the one million with the million dollars and ran. I contacted Lolly right away and warned her that he had a gun. They had no idea that they were related, so I thought that it could only end badly. I still don't believe it. That person was not my father, because because if he was, I I just killed my own father. Jesus, Lolly. Then then it really was you. Oh no. Chain of events. Jesus. 
That man was not my father, I mean, because at the stadium. There was a bad badger pulling the suitcase with the $1 million in it. But that badger pointed his gun at me, aiming to shoot me dead. That's why I... I used the gun I got from Lance. There was a gunshot, the other person crumbled to the ground, and I ran, scared for my life. Oh. Not good. I think the big picture is finally coming into focus, don't you? Lolly, forgive me. I didn't think it would turn into something so frightening. If only, if only I could have protected you. So, Miss Potts, she shot her own dad without even knowing who he really was. If what she says is true... Are you saying she's lying? But why would she lie about something like that? What purpose would it serve? You'd be surprised how often people lie without even realizing it themselves, Kay. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? What I mean is, listen very carefully to her confession one, once more and you'll see. Hmm. Guess at the stadium. <laughs> so please calm down and let's slowly talk through this. But I... All you have to do is simply tell us what happened at the stadium. Leave it to us to search out the truth. Can you do that? Or can you do that for me? Alright, so at the stadium. There was a bad badger pulling the suitcase with the one million dollars in, in it. But that badger pointed his gun at me aiming to shoot me dead. That's why I... I used the gun I got from Lance. There was a gunshot. Oh, God. I wasn't paying attention. That man was not my father. Right, I did not press on this, I don't think. I'll just press B a bunch. So that was the ransom money, wasn't it? Yeah, I just kind of zoned out. Yes, that's how I was able to identify Mr. Deacon almost immediately. It was all thanks to what Lance told me. And what did he tell you? Well, he called me on my cell phone and told me... That Mr. Deacon had had betrayed us, and had uh, run off with with the ransom money, and about how he had a gun. The badger pointed his gun at me, aiming to shoot me dead. Right, were you were you able to clearly see the gun? Yes, I got a very good look at it while I, while it was pointed at me. Oh, father, why would you try to shoot me? Do you really think a father would shoot his own daughter? I don't know. I don't want to believe it myself. But it's true, my father's left arm was raised with a gun in it. Pointed straight at me. I'm about to die, I thought. Miss Potts. Please calm down and take a deep breath. And then would you allow me to please, please hear that last statement one more time? Yes, of course. His left hand. It can't have been Colin then. No, because he's his dominant hand is his right. Unless he used his left to basically just like threaten and not actually shoot. Plus, it would have been a a, a gun that had nothing but blanks inside of it. Yeah, right. Dominant hand is right. I have here a dossier on your father. And according to this, your father was right-handed. Ah, then... The person pointing a gun at you from atop the stage was not Mr. Deacon. That's where the other suit was! Was it Lance? Hmm? Hold on there, Mr. Prosecutor. I think you need to take a refresher course. Bad Badger has a model gun attached to his right hand. Which is why the only hand he could have held the real gun with was his left. Isn't it possible that it went down like that? Agent Lang, were you paying attention to what Miss Potts was saying? Then again, I suppose I can't expect someone who has never set foot in court to catch it. Enough with the smugness, out with it already. Miss Potts told us earlier. There was a Bad Badger pulling the suitcase with the one million dollars in it. According to you, the Bad Badger had the gun in his left hand. Which would mean that he was pulling the suitcase with his right hand. Is that correct, Miss Pops? Yes, exactly. So, and I'm sure it was the Bad Badger. 
It had those huge sunglasses on its face. Well, if that's the case, even I can see there's a huge contradiction. Hmm. Miss Pops claims to have seen the Bad Badger. And yet the Bad Badger had both of his hands full. These two pieces of, of information contradict each other. So one must be wrong. It wasn't the Bad Badger. Both hands were not occupied. Both are correct. So it wasn't the Bad Badger and both weren't occupied. Mm. They are both correct. Impossible. That just leaves us with an ir irresolvable contradiction. Miss Pop's entire statement rests on the fact that she saw his sunglasses and beard. But what if that Bad Badger wasn't wearing pants on his lower half? This proves that there was a way for the Bad Badger to freely use both of his hands. Oops. Right, so, the head. Yeah, separate from the body. So she'd have seen that and just assumed. The costumes have two parts to them. A head and a body. Oh, I get it now. 